Hello, everyone. Today in this talk, I'd like to share some of our recent work on bidding agent design in the LinkedIn ad marketplace. This is a joint effort with many colleagues, primarily Kai Yu, Yuan Long, Min, and Nordin. Okay, to start, let me first give an overview of the LinkedIn ad marketplace. Our demand side is composed of advertisers. Each advertiser creates ads that target specific groups of LinkedIn members. They also provide us a budget indicating how much they like to spend for this ad. On the supply side, our, cust uh, our members visit the LinkedIn feed and that provides impression opportunities for these ads. Our members can interact with the ads leading to deeper funnel conversions, which is tied to our advertiser's goals. How we match the supply and demand side is through running auctions. This is also standard practice in the advertising industry. What that means is that each time a member visits a page, each ad targeting this member will submit a bid and we rank these ads in the page according to their bids. Therefore, bidding is a central component of our marketplace as it determines the outcome of auctions and in turn, which ad we show to LinkedIn members. Next, I will talk about how we design the automated bidding system. On a high level, there are two different sorts of design philosophies, one centralized and the other decentralized. In the centralized design, we formulate the optimization problem from the seller's perspective. For example, the goal can simply be trying to maximize the total revenue of the platform, or more generally, we can predefine utilities or values for the three-sided marketplace involving platform utilities, which is usually revenue, and member utilities, and advertiser utilities. The goal is then to optimize the joint utility, usually a weighted combination of the three terms. This results in one giant optimization problem, and there's a rich literature on this under the topic of online resource allocations. Finally, by dualizing, we can arrive at bidding strategies, which is a byproduct of this global optimization. On the other hand, in a decentralized design, we formulate the optimization problem from each individual advertiser's objective. This results in massive small optimization problems. The market equilibrium and the global metrics on the utilities we talked about are then a byproduct of each individual speeding strategy. Of course, there are pros and cons for each approach. We ended up choosing the decentralized scheme which solely, solely optimized for the advertiser's interest. It promotes fairness and transparency at the cost of global marketplace e efficiency, because we are not directly optimizing towards predefined global objectives. So for each ad, we formulate the problem like this. The goal is to maximize the number of results subject to budget constraint by choosing a proper bid, BT, in each auction. Suppose there are a total of big T impression opportunities or requests, and VT is the value for the T's impression. So the value is tied to advertiser's objectives and is usually produced by a machine learning model. For example, if the goal of the ad is to maximize clicks, then VT is the predicted click through rate. The most important objects in our framework are the GT and HT. They represent the probability of winning and the expected cost with bidding at BT. So if you model them as step functions, then this becomes a well-known knapsack problem. In reality, it's very challenging to solve because the problem parameters such as the minimum bid to win for each impression opportunity is not known beforehand. So we need to resort to some sort of online knapsack solver, which has pretty limited performance guarantees. As a result, people usually make these so-called fluid approximations. So that is when the number of impression opportunities that the big T is large, and the cost for each uh, opportunity is small relative to the budget, we can model GT and HT as smooth functions. So for example, instead of a binary win or loss, we can model GT, the winning probability, as a non-decreasing differentiable function of BT. Now, if we introduce a Lagrangian multiplier on the budget constraint, we arrive at the Lagrangian. The optimization in BT then amounts to surplus maximization, where the surplus is defined as the difference between value and cost. Here, the value is lambda adjusted, or we can call it budget adjusted. So the first order optimality condition can give us an explicit formula for the optimal bidding strategy. 
So in this formula here, the, the G, small gt and ht are derivatives of the big G and h. And the inverse here means function inverse. So up to this point, the framework has been pretty general. There is no assumption on the selling mechanism imposed by the platform. It incorporates a lot of the well-known optimal bidding formulas. For example, suppose the T's impression opportunity is sold where a second price auction, we can then spell out the GD and HD in that case. And turns out that the small H over G is an identity. Therefore, the optimal thing to do in a second price auction is simply to bid the lambda adjusted value. In the first price auction, there is a positive term added to the identity. And as a result, the optimal bid is a bit smaller than the lambda adjusted value. In other terms, this means that we need to apply bid shading in first price auctions, and exactly how much we should shade is dependent on our estimation of the meaning probability. Now the remaining thing to do is to find the optimal Lagrangian multiplier lambda, because then we know how much of the bid to submit in each add request, given the proper estimated B and G, uh, the winning probabilities. The optimal lambda can be obtained by the KKT condition. The KKT condition simply says that we need to match this band with the budget. Now it's surprising because if there is any budget left, you can bid higher to possibly obtain more results. The same with any online decision-making problem, we don't get to observe the V, G, and H, all these quantities beforehand. Therefore, we use online optimization methods to find lambda. So back to the Lagrangian, we can decompose it to the sum of online losses at each request. Derivative of the online loss is simply the difference between the average budget per request and the actual spend in the T's request. So there is a range of online optimization methods we can use for this problem. In particular, a follow the leader method means that at each request, we find the optimum lambda that would minimize the aggregate losses seen in the past. In practice, this can be achieved by replaying the past auctions to find the lambda T plus one such that the average cost per auction in the past auctions is B over T, the budget divided by the number of opportunities. I mean, this is feasible only if you have access to the full auction information, which is true uh, for all linking at marketplace since we run the auctions. I mean, other well-known online methods such as online gradient descent and online mirror descent can also be used, which translates to additive and multiplicative updates in Lambda based on the discrepancy be between the forecast and actual spend. The benefits of these methods is that they don't require access to the auction log. There are some practical learnings in implementing such an online optimization system, but before diving into that, I'd like to highlight the benefit of the general framework we proposed. So first of all, it's straightforward to introduce other type of constraints, right, in addition to the budget constraint. For instance, we can introduce some sort of cost control by adding an ROI uh, or short for return on investment or cost for result constraint in the problem setup. That translates to an extra multiplier in the bidding formula. Again, the multiplier can be found by online optimization methods. Similarly, we could define constraints on budget or result delivery patterns over time. This framework offers a systematic and composable way to handle a complex set of product requirements, which is a great benefit in, pra in practice. So talking about product, one important feature of the framework is that it's inherently compatible with the joint optimization of a collection of ads across multiple placements under a shared budget. A placement means an app or platform. In our use case, an advertiser can opt in to reach LinkedIn members not only on the LinkedIn feed, but also on its audience network consisting of trusted third-party publishers. Each of the publishers is a placement. There is limited study on the joint optimization across placements, and the majority of existing solutions are based on pre-calculated budget allocation. Note that in our framework, we do not differentiate the impression opportunities based on its placement. In fact, the impression opportunities can, can be from multiple, multiple placements, and they can interleave in time. In our use case in particular, different placements also run different type of auctions, some first price and some second price. By following the optimal bidding strategy in our framework, 
It automatically ensures optimality in the total number of results. And the final budget allocation across the placements is an outcome of optimal bidding. Similar arguments apply to the joint optimization of a group of S. We also proved that under the optimal bidding strategy, the marginal ROI among all the S across all the placements are the same, which is a necessary condition for optimality. Next, I will talk about several important practical considerations in implementing the bidding agent. Regarding the online update, in practice, we employ a batch version of the online update where Lambda is updated every interval DT. The update in Lambda depends on the difference between the allocated budget in the time window and the expected spend. In case the charge event is sparse, instead of using the observed spend, we need to rely on some estimators on the estimated uh, expected spend to reduce the variance. That said, the choice of the time window DT is very important as it controls the trade-off between frequency of the update and variance in the estimator. An alternative, uh, alternative design is to keep track of the observed request and to trigger an update uh, after a fixed number of observations. Parameter tuning is probably one of the most tedious yet important things practitioners do at work. For the minute of S, there can be an ideal set of parameters for each of them, but it's just not feasible in practice. We find that the normalization of lambda very helpful in that sense, since the scale of lambda varies across a lot across advertisers due to the diversity in budget and targeting setups. After normalization, it allows all the lambdas to be on the same scale so that the same set of hyperparameters for online optimization methods can be shared. We also analytically show that the normalization factor can have profound implications on the convergence behavior of lambda. And in the next slide, I will show how we come up with the personalized normalization factors for each ad. And finally, the asymptotic regret has been the major object studied in online optimization literature. People have been working hard to improve the bounds. However, due to the fact that ad campaigns have a limited lifetime, the number of bid updates we can afford to do are also limited. We find it useful to look at empirical regret instead and use that as a metric to select optim optimization methods and the hyperparameters within them. There are other topics regarding robustness to forecast and the model predictive control that you can find more details in the paper. OK, at the end, I'd like to talk about the cold start problem. Previously, we mentioned online optimization methods that provide incremental updates to LAMP. The cold start problem, namely the starting value of the multiplier, is also very important as it as impacts the time it takes to converge. And on a macroscopic level, it also influences the price stability of the entire marketplace. In this paper, we give an explicit formula for the bid initialization problem in second price auctions. Give an estimation of the competitor's bid distribution and the value distribution of the ad. And connecting to the last slide, remember the personalized normalization factor we talk about for lambda. This is exactly what we use as the normalization factor, and it enjoys a lot of the favorable convergence guarantees. Okay, thank you for your time, and please refer to our paper for more details and experimental results.